So this is our old favorite, the stable jewel thief. So we've gone over this, you know, probably too many times, but um, just for those new to the game, uh, it's driven by the QX5252. Solar panel comes in. Uh, you've got uh, an inductor here, and I've been playing with the values here. So um, it provides, you know, minimal current, I guess, just to run a microcontroller. Uh, you've got a Schottky diode here. Uh, with a low forward voltage so that um, you know everything gets through as much as possible. A Zener here which will set the voltage on the output so I generally use about a 5.1 or a 4.7 for that. Uh, then you've got a 47 microfarad um, capacitor and I'm actually thinking about maybe doubling that up with a 100 nanofarad as well so I'm still tinkering uh, with this guy here. I might even go to something like a 100 uh, microfarad uh, with 100 nanofarad but anyway at the moment and it has been for such a long time a 47 microfarad capacitor in this location there's your output there's your battery what's better than one qx5252 well maybe two because one of the issues that i have had with this is that the chip and it's a lovely chip but it makes a decision uh during the day to uh, turn off uh, so here it switches off uh, and then the solar panel here will just feed through into the battery. But this guy here, this part of the circuit gets nothing. And uh, I did put on the uh, on the channel and also on the blog a while ago uh, a combination of an A tiny eighty five and an A tiny thirteen. With well, A tiny thirteen, just sat there and monitored the voltage. So, you know, it had a watchdog capacity, but it's pretty useless in this environment because that watchdog capacity disappears during the day. So I started thinking about, does it have to? So what I thought was maybe I should add another QX5252. So this was my idea. Maybe with this QX5252, we get rid of the solar panel. So all we have is battery in, so let's draw the battery here. So we've got our battery and we've got our, uh, oh, it's really thick. Let's go to something like this. So we've got positive, positive, negative, negative. Okay, so yeah, that's not gonna win any art prizes. But anyway, so we've got our, the one QX5252, which uh, doesn't have a solar panel coming, but is fed via the battery. And then via this circuit here provides your stable output of, let's say, 5 volts. And then on this one here, what we do is we, we basically do the reverse. So we get rid of this part of the circuit. And uh, you don't need your inductor either. And what you've got here is your solar panel, which during the day will feed in through the QX5252 to charge the battery. So daytime, this is doing the work to charge a battery, but it's also discharging and, and still providing the uh, microcontroller with power. And then nighttime, uh, the solar panel is not feeding through. This side of things shuts down, but this one is still open. Because the solar panel is missing, this one is still open and it, it will provide. So that was my plan, but I never knew if it would work. Uh, so the only way to find that out is to breadboard it up and, and see what happens. Well, let's take a look at um, this little Frankenstein. Uh, we'll start with the known quantity. So this is the stable dual thief circuit that we've seen on other blogs and other videos. Uh, so at its heart, it's got the QX5252, uh, which is typically found in your solar garden lights. So it's a bit hard to see here, but um, that's the center there. Uh, we have a Zener diode here. Uh, so that is a 5V1. On the other side, we've got a Schottky diode. That's a 1N5817. We have our 47 microfarad capacitor and uh, we have our inductor. And I think that one's a 330. Uh, so that's 330 microhenry. So according to the data sheet, uh, that's very little juice going to the A tiny 13. But of course, the A tiny 13 itself is only running at 128 kilohertz. And most of the time it's asleep in the uh, in the program I've got. So the program itself was fairly interesting. It's uh, an assembler program and it basically sleeps for eight seconds and then turns on uh, one of the LEDs for two seconds then goes back to sleep and turns on the other LED. So I'll, I'll put that code on the blog because 
it, it, the code is working, but I'm not convinced that it's the most elegant solution that I have uh, come up with there to have this uh, going. I, I didn't want to do just a simple blinking light. Though. I wanted to have firstly the uh, the LED on for a, you know a decent amount of time, so two seconds, and then uh, every ten seconds. Um, so in order to you know just to see what this would go as a sort of a watchdog, which requires perhaps you know a little more than uh, than just a blinking light. Now the the new part is here's another QX5252, and it's connected up to the solar panel. Uh, so the idea is that during the day the solar panel collects light. It goes through the QX5252, feeds into this rail here, which is to the um, to the nickel metal hydride battery. But also the nickel metal hydride battery through the rail feeds this QX5252, which outputs the stable uh, voltage of around 5 volts to the ATINY13. And then at night time, this uh, obviously at night time shuts off, but this doesn't have a solar panel connected to it, so um, it's still going. So uh, it goes and um, the discharge from the battery continues, and this continues going day and night. So it's been going for probably, well, a week and a half at this stage now, and um, showing no signs of slowing down, which is really great. The voltage on a really sunny day, and we have had a few, uh, at the end of the day we'll be up around the one... 0.33 ish volts um, but we've just come off the back of three really miserable uh, days so rain overcast very little sun and uh, even though this is sitting on a windowsill um, it's not getting an awful lot of light so we'll just see how it's going it's about eight o'clock at night at the moment so it's had a full day of nonsense and we'll just see what that's showing So 1.27, if I can get that right. Yeah, 1.28 volts. And, uh, you know, in the morning, it might be down as low as sort of, you know, 1.22 or something like that. So it's still not draining an awful lot, but really nice that this circuit is actually able to go both day and night, even on miserable days. Probably the next thing for me is to put it to some use other than just blinking lights. And I've got a few ideas in mind tied up with another circuit which I'm looking at at the moment. So um, yeah, really, really pleased to see that this works. I'm not sure that all the kinks are ironed out, but I think that's a great proof of concept. So that's this brand new circuit working. Pretty good development and uh, I'll see you next time.